Hello everyone. Welcome to Geomorphology. We will begin our geomorphology session with the geomorphic process. Before going to the topic, let's have a quick glance at what is geomorphology. Geomorphology can be simply defined as the study of the outer form of the Earth's land surface. In fact, the term geomorphology has been derived from the Greek word geo meaning earth and morphos meaning external form or shape. Thus, the science of study that deals with the external form or the shape of the earth's land surface, we term it as geomorphology. The subject matter of geomorphology is generally studied on the basis of three ways. Firstly, what is the dimension and the scope of the relief features, which we simply call it as landforms. Secondly, what are the process by which these landforms are formed and how it attained its present shape. And thirdly, what are the approaches of geomorphic studies? We will look into these landforms. Thus, according to Worcester, geomorphology can be defined as the study of landforms and the landforming processes. These landforming processes are termed as geomorphic process. Thus, Geomorphic processes are those processes that are responsible for the formation of landforms. On the basis of origin, the geomorphic processes are of two types, endogenic process and exogenic process. Endogenic process are those geomorphic processes that originate in the deep interior of the earth. The word endogenic has been derived from two words, endo and genic, which means within and origin respectively. On the basis of materials, the endogenic process are of two types, diastrophism and volcanism. Diastrophism is one of the endogenic process that refers to the displacement of subterranean rocks. The diastrophic process operate very slowly and their effects become visible only after thousands and millions of years. Take the case of the coast of Baltic Sea. The coast of Baltic Sea rises 1.3 meter in a century, which is generally invisible to our naked eye. At the same time, volcanism is another type of endogenic process that refers to the movement of molten rocks below the surface of the earth. These type of forces are very sudden in nature and hence they are also termed as catastrophic process. The diastrophic process can also be again divided into two on the basis of direction. These are the horizontal movements and the vertical movements. The horizontal movements are those diastrophic process that relates to the origin of mountains. Therefore, it is also termed as orogenic process. The word orogeny has been derived from the Greek words oro and genis, meaning mountain and origin respectively. At the same time, the vertical movements are those diastrophic process that relates to the origin of continents. It is also termed as epirogenic movements. The word epirogeny has derived from the Greek words epiro and genic, which means continents and origin. The horizontal movements are also divided on the basis of two ways. One, if the two forces work in opposite direction and another one when the forces work towards each other. 
when the horizontal movements work in opposite direction it is called tensional forces such type of forces and movements are also termed as divergent forces and movements when the horizontal movements work towards each other it is termed as compressional forces or convergent forces the vertical movements are also responsible for causing the upliftment and subsidence of continental masses through upward and downward movements respectively the upliftment of continental masses are termed as emergence and the subsidence of continental masses are termed as submergence now let's move into what is an exogenic process the processes that originate in the outer surface of the earth are termed as exogenic process the word exogenic has been derived from the words exo and genic meaning outer and origin respectively the exogenic process are generally of three types that is the weathering the mass movement and gradation we know very well that the rock weathering can be defined as the disintegration and decomposition of rocks at the same place mass movement is the downslope movement of weathered material mainly due to the gravity sometimes water is acted as a lubricant to this mass movement the earth surface is highly uneven in nature this natural irregularity of the earth surface is termed as relief the nature always tries to level up these irregularity of the surfaces and thus the process of leveling up of the earth's land surface is termed as gradation this leveling up of the earth surface is done by either reducing the highlands or filling up of the lowlands the reduction of highlands are termed degradation and the filling up of the lowlands are termed aggradation the gradation is generally done by various agents and these are termed as gradational agents there are five major gradational agents working on the surface of the earth these are the running water the moving ice or the glaciers the wind the sea waves and the underground water i hope you have enjoyed today's session for any doubts or clarifications please post in the comment box or in the google classroom i wish everyone a great learning experience thank you all